Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive. The neighborhood of home was nestled between large fields of wheat that seemed to be able to grow all year except for winter, and two large forests on the southern and northern border. They were among the lesser visited places by the various villagers of home, as there was mostly nothing but trees. Though there was a large mansion in the northern forest, where Eddie Deer occasionally delivered mail to, so it had to have at least one puppet living there. However, unlike the northern forest, which was thick, foreboding, dark and scary, the southern one was light, sparsely populated by animals too, and quite pretty. It was here Wally Darling, painter by trade, often retreated to, to find both inspiration and motivation to create many of his artwork, especially the non-specific kind, such as his mildly famous Trees from Another World collection. It was comparable to an old mountain monk training there martial arts beneath a waterfall. Repetition until perfection was reached. He would strap on his hiking boots, throw a backpack filled with snacks, a notepad and pencil on his back, and just walk for hours on end. And Wally would find many special things in places alike. For instance, he had found a hot spring here, with fresh, crystal clear water. He found a rock formation that looked like Frank's head, and most importantly, a large collection of mushrooms tall mushrooms, borderline trees. The painter often wondered what secrets the northern forest may hold outside of the mansion, but he was too afraid of it to try and look into it. He did these expeditions on a bi-weekly basis, Mondays and Saturdays. Wally wondered how far he could go until he reached the end of the forest. But today wasn't an expedition to try and reach the forest's opposite end, no, uh, today he wanted to go on a very special place he had discovered a while ago. This time he wanted to sketch his discovery, to later paint it in his studio, as it was just that beautiful. <sighs> what was that? Your attention was awoken. By vibrations that could feel just above the soil. You moved slowly, your eyes not yet able to see what you felt. Not that you could pretty well to begin with. It had been a while since you had eaten, after all. Uh, summer wasn't really a rainy time. And without rain, there was no chance attracting any prey. But they smelled interesting, as their scent was carried over to you via the wind. An artificial smell was coming from them. Cologne. So it wasn't an animal. It was a puppet. It was another puppet. It was a familiar smell, too, yes. Your mouth watered unintentionally. Hunger, food, your meal was delivering itself, your stomach grumbled, you're going to feast today. Wally hummed a happy-go-lucky tune as he wandered past a couple of thorny bushes, the reason he wore long pants today. His goal was a florist clearing somewhere around the middle section of the southern forest. It was quite a track, so he put a lot of snacks and tent into his backpack as well, just in case he couldn't return home in time. Lucky for him, his house, the titular home, and sentient, potentially demonic entity wanted him out of itself today. 
Wally didn't know it, but Holm had found itself attracted to Wally's neighbor's Julie's tool shed, and he wanted to ask it out on the date, not really knowing that the shed wasn't sentient. But then again, that hardly mattered to the entity. Ah, ouch, complained Wally. Somehow a thorny vein from the rose bush had cut his ankle. Blood was dripping from the wound. He was so taken aback by it that he didn't notice the green tendril vanish beneath the earth. Taking off his backpack, he quickly took out a band-aid. At least it was just a scratch. Ori stopped hurting as well. Small inconvenience aside, the reason Wally wanted to get to the clearing was the most wonderful flower he had ever seen. It was huge, its stem as thick as a trunk, yet its height was just barely above the soil. Its blossom, the time he had been here, had been closed tightly. It had pink petals. Uh, he had hoped by now it was time for it to bloom. If not, he'd just sketched the closed flower. It was pretty regardless, after all. He wondered, though. It was so close to the ground, and... Why? That was so... strange. For a flower. After climbing over a couple of rocks that created a semi-protective wall all around his goal, he arrived. The sun was shining brightly onto the beautiful plant, and what he saw shocked him so much he didn't realize the tendrils wrapping around his legs. The moment your eyes met with the painters, you knew who he was. He was the prey that escaped you months ago, at the time you had still been blind still budding beneath your petals. The man yelped when your vines grabbed him, carrying him through the air, right to your face. Wally was hanging upside down as he struggled against your grip. You were, at least from above your knees, a regular female puppet made up of light green felt. Your body slender and quite seductive to any male gaze. You had long, dark green hair, thin vines coming out of your head. Leaves protruding from your hips, covering up your shameful pits. And the sweet scent of nectar floated around your attracting, luring body. You blinked at the man you had captured. You had tasted his blood earlier. It was quite bitter. Not really what you were after, but it would do. Staring him down, he opened his mouth and spoke. Wow! You blinked. He sounded impressed. Curiously, you tilted your head. Since you were a plant, you had no organ to speak with, despite having a mouth. It just wasn't a necessary thing to evolve for your kind. Yet you could understand him. You had watched puppets for a long time, after all. Wally was so completely taken aback by your beauty, he didn't realize the life-threatening danger he was in. And he spoke without thinking. You're beautiful, he said. Curiously, you pulled him closer to your face, staring him down, unblinking. No, 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 I mean it! He then looked towards his feet, then to the ground. Uh, what are you going to do? You opened your mouth, revealing that you had Venus fly esque fuzzed teeth. The most wonderfully sweet smell emitting from your gaping jaw as you dangled the painter over your head. Y you're going to eat me? He shouted, scared. And you nodded. Gosh, he needed to think quickly. Uh, crap, crap. Uh, uh, Wally gulped. Uh, how about this instead? Panicking, he fiddled with his backpack. He knew if he dropped it, that was it. But if he managed to open his snack compartment, 
Maybe he could give you a taste for chocolate instead. Wally's fingers took hold of his zipper, and all of his chocolate bars and gummy bears cascaded out of the bag right onto your face. Not feeling like getting hit by stuff, you threw the painter away. He grunted as he landed on the ground with a loud thud. The force around Wally rustled as you angrily stared him down. Wait, wait, he jumped up. Already thorns were in his face. Picking up one of the chocolate bars from the ground, he demonstrated how to open them. Your eyes narrowed cautiously as he put the chocolate in his mouth. Mmm, mm, yummy, he proclaimed. Much better than me. You don't want to eat me. Y you can eat this, though. A couple of snacks were just in reach of your arms, and so you took one. You looked back at the painter, who mimicked the unwrapping motion with his hands. Following his example, you managed to unsheathe the sweet treat, taking the entire brown nugget bar out, lifting it over your head, and devouring it in a single gulp. Your eyes widened immediately as the sweet taste spread throughout your entire being. Delighted, you shook inside your flower. See? said Wally happily. If you eat me, there's no more of that. You understand, yes? He chuckled helplessly. And then a green tendril shot up from the ground behind him, pushing him towards you. Wally stopped right in front of your pink petals. With your hands, you pointed at the various treats that had dropped beyond your immediate reach. You want me to feed you? A green tongue blepped out of your jaw, and Wally sighed. Were you mocking him? Going down on his knees, he picked up three bars and two packets of gummy bears before stepping onto the pink flower petal that you had lowered to allow him to get to you more directly. Now that he got a closer look at you, it seemed like you were standing in a yellow puddle of nectar. Past your knees, your legs were part of your stem. Here, the sweet smell was even stronger, and it made his head spin. Once he was close enough, you wobbled with your paddle, making the painter stumble into you. Thankfully, he didn't drop the candy bars. His heart was racing as he looked up at you. The portion that was a puppet was a little taller than him. Well, a lot taller, in fact. Wally just reached below your supple... He blushed as he gave you one of the snack bars, looking away from what he was looking at. And just as delighted as before, you gulped the entire thing in one go. Wally continued feeding you, until his backpack had been emptied of all the special treats he had packed for himself. With horror, he stared into its emptiness, completely expecting you would immediately devour him. Uh, that's it, I, uh, got no more candy. He said with a shaking voice, but instead of angrily throwing him away or, well, shoving him into your mouth, you closed your flower around him, trapping him inside. Your scent by now had worked itself deep into his brain, making him less aware. He was ankle deep in the stuff anyways, the golden liquid seeping through his shoes, absorbing into his skin. With your hands... With your long, tender arms, you embrace the painter, caressing his body. To you, you had found a suitable mate. He had fed you the most delicious food, kept you alive, that would help you grow. So much energy was in this stuff. His eyes rolled back. Your body felt so pleasant. It was a little cool soft you pressed your mouth on his your tongue pushing past his lips sharing your delicious sap with him through a small hole at its tip 
Wally's eyes rolled back, completely and utterly mesmerized. Seconds turned to minutes before the painter managed to take back some control over his body. As delicious as your sap was, he felt full. He had swallowed so much, and he needed to breathe, but all he could do was inhale more of your pheromones. He'd be trapped here forever if he didn't do anything. He slapped himself once, twice, thrice, and at the fourth slab he snapped out of it. Confused, you looked at him. Uh, um, I haven't even introduced myself, he said as he pushed against the closed petals from behind himself. Uh, my, my name is Wally. Your mouth formed the words he spoke. Yes, Wally, Wally darling. He could feel his mind slipping again. He wanted to be held by you again. It felt so good. Ah. Uh, Ah, uh, I really need to get going. Possessively, you lunged forward, pulling him closer once again as the yellow liquid rose above your navel, submerging the two of you. Wally instantly understood the danger. L -l 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 Let's make a deal, he said, right as the liquid reached his chin. Clearly you understand what I'm saying, he grunted. His entire body was resisting your attempts. He was fighting, fighting your influence. It was so difficult. He could just give in to the pleasure you were offering. T tell you what, if you let me go, I come back with more chocolate and I bring also more candy. We enjoy a fun time together. This got a reaction out of you and your grip around his body lessened ever so slightly. Okay, okay, you understand me. The liquid was now lowering, though he was still dripping with the stuff. Okay. Okay. So, if you let me go, I bring you a whole bunch of tasty stuff. And then we can do more of whatever you just wanted to do with me. But only if you let me go. I'll be back, I promise. Your instincts were telling you to not do this. But you trusted him. You opened up your petals, finally giving him the sweet release of regular air. He inhaled through his mouth like it was his first breath after almost drowning. But as he turned around to leave, you grabbed his wrist. He looked back at you. You were giving him puppy eyes. I'll be back, just as promised. He then jumped off your petals slowly left the clearing while walking backwards. It was four days later when Wally decided to head back to you, this time more prepared, knowing what was waiting for him. With your bud open, you were sitting on a petal when you arrived. He had a bag hanging from his right shoulder, and he was wearing Nothing but swim trunks. You tilted your head, curiously. A couple meters from your clearing, he had set up a tent, where he had discarded his clothes. I got a lot of good stuff here. Interested, you rose from your leaves and leaned towards him. And this time I uh, can't stay longer. Quietly he added because I know what I'm getting myself into. Without warning, you grabbed him, pulling him into you. This time, you wouldn't let go until you were properly pollinated by him.